Tonight I want to talk about angels. Woo! Say angels. angels. All right. Do you do know that there are angels out there. Yes, my man. All right. I, we are aware of them. Tell them I am aware of them. I am very aware of them. God's covenant enforcing agents. That's what they are. They are God's covenant enforcing agents. You know, like the FBI, they call them what? Agents. Yeah, and they got a whole lot of other agencies that are here for the sole purpose of protecting us as citizens of these United States of a what? America. Now, multitudes of angels have been assigned by God to carry out the terms of his covenant with you, with us. Say with me. How many? Multitude. Say it like a meaning. Multitude of angels have been assigned by God, not by the devil, to carry out the terms of his covenant with us. That's what they're there for. They're to remind us, to nourish us on, to quicken us. Now, however, their work cannot be accomplished until you fulfill your part of the covenant. Tell anybody there's something you have to do. Look at somebody else. There's something you have to do. Now, God promises to give us the power to get wealth. That's God's promises. Look at it, Deuteronomy chapter 8. We are not the broke or the poor that God is trying to make wealthy. We are the wealthy that the devil is trying to make poor. Amen. We're not the sick that God's trying to make well. We are the well that the devil is trying to make what? Sick. They may get you to eat all the wrong things and saying all the wrong things. Why is everybody always uh, picking on me? <laughs> like Charlie Brown, amen? So we're not no Charlie Brown, though. No. We're not no Charlie Brown. We're children of the Most High, what? God, amen. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's look at verses 17 and 18. You there? Say, I got it. I got it. Look at this. Verse 17 says, And thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of my hand had gotten me this what? But look at the next verse. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get what? Why? That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. So who is the person that is responsible for the wealth that we receive? God. Who is the one that's responsible for the health that we live in and that we have? God. Say, God loves me some awesome, and I know it. All right. Now, this power can take the form of ability. It can take the form of an anointing. This power can be in wisdom. It can be in enlightenment. You know, sometimes something opens your eyes, somebody say something, your eyes get, oh, I didn't know that. It can come in the form of what? Enlightenment. And it is designed to lead us to our wealthy place. Hey, neighbors, stop talking poor mouth anymore. Come on, sir, stop talking poor mouth anymore. Well, the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat what? The fruit thereof. So let the weak say I am strong. Now, look, he tells you a negative thing. Let the weak do what? Say what? I'm strong. Would God have us lying? No. He knows that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat what? The fruit thereof. We're eating the fruit of what we've been saying or sometimes even our parents and grandparents have been saying over us and we didn't know, know no better. You got to shift your gear with your tongue. Amen. Change your life with your what? Tongue. Change your life with your what? Yes. Tongue. Yes. Now there's pressure. Now the enemy going to put pressure on you. Well, you'd have been saying it for three days. Ain't nothing happened. He's a liar. It means you're closer to it than you ever been before. The Bible calls Satan the father of what? Lies. Now, that's awesome. The father of lies, he means he's the biggest liar there he is. So you have to put pressure on yourself and say what God says, regardless of what you're experiencing, what you're going through, what's happening to you, you have to say what what? God says. Man says, I don't go nowhere unless God tell me to go. And Jerry Seville had a brother like that who came to his meeting. I don't go nowhere. He was in overalls and shoes, looked like they were worn out, had on him old hat. And Jerry Seville looking at him, he said, man said, I don't go nowhere. Let's God tell me to go. And when
when he got there, when he unfolded on Jerry Savelle, he knew it was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in his eye because the man loaded him with money, just boom, everything he needed for whatever he had, God had spoken to him to do with it, he got it. Amen. Next time the little man showed up, he put a smile on his face. He came in them same old overalls, same old ugly hat, broke in shoes. See, you can't go by how people look and determine what they have. Oh, Lord. Y'all look at somebody coming up, shining shoe, head broke down, might not have a dime. And see, this guy doesn't, he doesn't, he's not looking like he got nothing, but he knows what he had. And every time God would talk to him, he would go to Jerry Savelle meeting and say, the Lord told me this. <laughs> Hush David said, did the Lord say anything? Did the Lord say anything? <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, God knows where we are, and he knows what it is that we have required in our lives. God doesn't talk about needs. Now, I know the Apostle Paul says, but my God shall supply all of your needs. He didn't say his need. Are you listening? What did he say? My God shall supply all of your needs according to what? His riches in glory by what? Quite, but he didn't say my needs. Because he knew who his source was. Who was his source? God. Who is your source? God. I'm telling you. You got to know. He said, my sheep know my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not what? God's talking to folk all the time, but they haven't learned how to obey. That's the neighbor says, God said anything to you. Come on, it's God said. <laughs> Come on, don't say it with no lad now. Be serious. Because God might have spoken something to me, and you don't know what folk got now. Remember now, you can't go by how to dress. You can't go by what their, what, their, what their parents come from. You can't go by that. Amen. God might have just blown some over there in the house, and now they loaded and trying to look like they ain't got nothing. You know, that's how you try to be innocent. But say you're loaded. Come on, look at somebody. Say you're loaded and hadn't found out about it yet. Come on, say you hadn't found out about it yet. Amen. But that's yet now, but you got it. Look at it. The Amplified said in verse 18, but you should earnestly remember the Lord your God. Ha, dog. Hey. See, people forget about you looking at your job, looking at your kinfolk, look like somebody coming by and drop something off. You have forgotten about your what? God. The Bible says he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all Thomas Paul Williams can ask. Can't put your name in there. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I said, look, my confidence in him. The Bible says put no trust in who? Man. What is he telling you to do? Put your confidence in God. Say, my God shall supply. All of that I require in the name of Jesus. In this lifetime. Let me be real quick too now. Something might be real quick too now. Come on, look at somebody that said, might be real quick too now. Amen. Now, God is, that, 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 no, he's the daddy. He's the father. And what he really tries to do is get us to understand with a little bit of things, if you can be trusted, then he knows you can be trusted with anything bigger. But if you can't be trusted with the dime, don't look for the million. Uh-uh. Billions and trillions. Septillion, octillion, no nillion, decillion. Don't look for them. Them the big money. Amen. And nowadays, you know, to be a billionaire, you got teenagers that are billionaires. I said teenagers. So what's up with that? <clears throat> the angels know where the stuff is. Tell you, but the angels know where the stuff is. All right. All right. Uh, now, this power can take the form of ability. It can take the form of anointing. It can take the form of wisdom and enlightenment. And it is designed to lead us to our what? Wealthy place. Wealthy place. See, when you're wealthy, you, you, you override a lot of sicknesses. A lot of people's sicknesses are really money problems. How I'm going to pay these bills. How I'm going to send this child to college. How I'm going to, how I'm going to, how I'm going to. That's where it comes from. Worry is never intended for a child of God. You've never, you never been designed by God to worry. Don't you name, so don't worry about nothing. <coughs> you remember what the man of God said, didn't you? None of these things move me. In other words, I refuse to what? Worry. Because worry comes with it, fear. 
When you're worrying, it, it's a clear indication that you're afraid of something that's going to happen that you don't know or have any power over it. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a what? Sound mind. Amen. Amen. You, you, you've got to really understand that the word of God is true and that you're hearing from God. Tell you, but I'm hearing from God right now. When? Right now. Look at somebody that said, right now. All right. Now, there's an example in the Bible of Joseph received the ability to interpret dreams. He didn't go to school to do that. How did he get it? He received it from God. What did he receive? The ability to interpret what? Dreams. Amen? Now, as a result, he prospered even when he was in prison. So it doesn't matter where you are. God knows how to get to you whatever you require. And he's not, just a, he's not a God of just enough. He's a God of more than enough. He says he does the exceeding abundant above all we can ask or what. Amen. So you got to get out of that small mentality. If won't my soul be saved. You're already saved. Amen. You want to have enough do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do until whoever come around, look at just cut them off a piece of that chunk. Won't be no nickel and dime, tell me, won't be no nickel and dime. Now, you can be broke so long until it doesn't look like it's fair for anything to come your way. My neighbor said, I refuse to believe that, believe that lie. <laughs> amen, amen. Now, you ain't got no job, you don't have no kinfolk, but you got God. <laughs> Who you got? You got God. <laughs> amen. Don't, don't count God out of the equation. If you're going to do anything, let him be the beginning of the what? Equation. Too many saints have that small mentality. I just want my soul to be saved. You're already saved. Now you want everything that comes with salvation. Look at you how you're looking at me like a dog in a new pen. Hey, tell your neighbor, look here. Look here, you got to get it together now. We are not those that God is trying to make rich. We're the ones that the devil is trying to steal from and make him poor. Right. It's not what you have, it's who you are. Yes, that's it, that's if you don't know who you are, there is nothing that God can put into your life that will make it better. You got to know who you are. I'm a child of the Most High God. Now, when you say you're a child of God, it means that, look, there are no limitations on your life. No limitations. When you get up, wake up in the morning, don't say, good Lord, it's morning. No, no, no. Good morning, Lord. Let me say, good morning, Lord. Good morning, Lord. Amen. Now, see, you walk back out there and the folk, you say, well, I ain't going to sit here around these folk. Look here. Them folk need to hear some of that too. Yeah. Amen. Because whenever, the, you know, your stuff starts to manifest in your life, they're going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're going to hear most. <laughs> Amen. You say, all right, all right. Here's, here's a five. Here's a five. <laughs> 5,500,000, you know, whatever you praise the Lord. All right, so we got to get it, we got to get it. Amen, amen, amen. Now, you know the story of Joseph. How many of you remember the story of Joseph? You somewhat remember, right? Okay. He received the, the ability to do what? Interpret dreams. He didn't go to school. Wasn't sitting beside nobody watching how he did it either. What happened to him? He received the ability to interpret dreams. Now, you know that's still today, right? In other words, God is still in the giving business. What he's done for one, he'll do for another. But Joseph wasn't trying to use this for his own benefit. He was using it for God's what? Glory. Hunch your neighbor said, I use my gift for God's glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, since he received the ability to interpret dream, dreams as such, he prospered even when he was in prison. So God can bless you regardless of where you are. Well, if I was in California, if I was in Texas, if I was in Nevada, if I was in, if, if I was in, if I was in, you where you need to be to make the devil shame. Come on, say, I'm where I need to be. To do what? To make the devil shame. Because where, where they declare that there can be nobody, there isn't anybody, God wants to prove you and let him use you to show other people 
there is no, lo no place, no location where God can't raise somebody up who will just give him the glory for what he's doing. They won't take no credit. Well, you know, you know, you know, I tell you, I don't know. It just might have been how I look. You know, my, just, I don't know, just my charisma. No, no, it was just God. Come on, say it's just God. Come on now, talk like it, just God. Now, I'm talking to you to get you right, because when if you get, when, when, not here, when this money comes to you, you don't need to be continuously being a God robber. You need to be the biggest giver in the ministry. Competing with yourself. You've been giving that chump change, a nickel and a dime, trying to hold back on God. I got to get some gas. God knows you need fuel for your car. He knows you need tires. And he wants to put them on there without you having to pay anything. He knows you need clothing. He wants you to get them without having them, not stealing them. But God knows how to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. But he got to find somebody that really can have confidence in him and let him do it for them. And whenever it comes, there won't be braggadocia. But man, you know, look, I mean, it's just not been my charisma. No, it ain't my charisma. It's the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in my eyes. You got to have that tenacity about you. So much love for God doesn't matter who's around you. He does all sometimes it's wrapped in heaven around. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me like you love. Can't nobody love me like you love me. You got to get out of that. You got to get out of that game. You got to get out of that game. When you start loving God, I'm telling you, stuff changes. Uh -uh, we start loving him. When you start really loving God, there's nothing too big that can come out of your hand. No, I, 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 I. thank you, Jesus. He used to sing a song, the more you give to him, the more he'll give to you. Amen. But somehow the enemy has really warped the minds of the people in the church. Hey, neighbor, that lie got to go. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're sitting here, yeah. and we are the inheritors of the earth and don't even know it. It belongs to us. And the devil sure even got it. We blaming God. Well, if the Lord don't help me, uh -uh, the Lord has already helped us. He just want us to go and do like he says while we are now. We're in, the, we're in the stages of being able to be trained how to handle what God is about to do in our lives. Because if you can handle the little, you can handle the much. Won't get in your big house and people come back, you've got your nose stuck up. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Drive your car and look at you and you won't even look back at them. Oh, you walk out and I'm telling you, you got so much gold on you, blinging mess, better than Mr. T. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 you flashing, I'm trying to, yeah, no, don't do that. No. You got to act like you, you're accustomed, you, you're aware. This is something that's just common to you. What is it that's common? But you practice with the little things. What do you do? You practice with the little things. I mean, that diamond you might have, it, it, you have to really get in a big, where the big sun is to see it look little just a little bit. Yeah. But don't be embarrassed by it. <laughs> first shall be last. The last Amen. shall be first. This thing is winding down. Amen. And the Bible Amen. says God's word will not return to him void, but it shall accomplish that which he pleased and prosper in the thing whereunto he sent it. And y'all know who he sent it to, don't you? Amen. Pastor, wait, come on, y'all, you, you got to get it right. All right, all right. I'll let you go. All right. But we got to get it. All right. Look at verse 18 again. I'm reading out the Amplified. But you shall earnestly remember. See, people get so forgetful. Won't come to church. I'm going to Hawaii. And my cousin said we're going to Alaska. We have never been to Hukabuka. <laughs> you just, but see, what has happened is that the enemy gets your mind. Whenever you begin to have more than you are accustomed to, problems come. Now you think everybody wants your money. When you had nothing, you wanted theirs. God has to, this mind, let this mind be in you, which was also in what? Who thought it not robbery being made equal with God? So he didn't have to even wonder about money or things or clothing or nothing or housing. He knew how to get it. So they got to train us. Can folk come around? Bless them. They 
come back the next day and say, this, this ain't the day, the day now. <laughs> Every day ain't Sunday. <laughs> that to happen. Amen. Because they, they have the wrong mentality. The people in the world just don't think like God. And the church is beginning to learn how to do what? Think like God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Say amen if you mean it. Amen. Look at somebody that say amen if you mean it. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Now, uh, Joseph, as you know, he received the ability to do what? Interpret dreams. Now, to most people, that meant nothing. What is interpreting dream going to do for you? He never thought that. He knew that whatever God did in his life, it was going to be an asset. It was going to be what? An asset. Whatever God does in your life, never count it as being small. He says, despise not the day of small beginning. Well, I, I don't get it. I ain't got as much as you got, but you got something, didn't you? So you should be throwing your hand in the air and act like you showed enough care. Thank you, Jesus. What? Thank you, Jesus. What? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Give God what? Glory for it. Give him glory. Tell him, give him glory. See, the angels know. The angels know when you, are, you have a heart for them to do what God has assigned them to do in your life and through your life. They're not going to come and help you to do no evil, nothing nasty. Whatever they come to do, it is God's will. What is it? It is God's will. Hunch neighbor, that's my that's my greatest desire. My greatest All right, so Joseph received the ability to do what? Interpret dreams. And as a result, he prospered even when he was in prison. You can't stop the blessing from working regardless of where you are. The blessing will work anywhere people will receive it. Amen. And you receive it before you got the manifestation. The manifestation is not when you receive it. Once, once you get it in your heart, that's it. Hunch name said, that's it. And then you let God nurture it. Now, when you get it nurtured, then you become, how you say, uh, like a pro with it. You're not flukish. You're not, you're not childish with it. You have the ability to be able to operate in that gift or in that talent or in whatever it is that God has deposited in you in a magnificent what? way. So God wants us to do it. And we got to do it. The world is waiting on the church. Yes. Hunch name said the world is waiting on me. I know. Look at somebody else. I know the world is waiting on me. Now, make a note of this now. Angels are at your disposal. You, you, you didn't get it. Angels are at your disposal. Say, angels are at my disposal. In other words, they do whatever it takes to carry out God's promise to bless your life. Because you and I are Abraham's what? Seed. We're born again what? Christians. Say, I'm born again. And I'm Abraham's seed. Amen. Angels are at your disposal. It's like a bell hop when you come to a hotel. I don't know, I know y'all been to them big hotels. When your car pulls up, them butlers come out with their suits on, they ready. And you can't even get the door. They're going to grab that door. I'm telling you, and let you step out. You'd be so mesmerized by you trying to go in your pocket before you can get up straight. <laughs> Amen. Well, see, they've been, they've been groomed in that, how to handle that. They're not asking you for anything. No. Well, what you going to give me? They never ask you anything. But they serve you so well, if you got anything, you're going to come over there. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. They can do it. Well, hunch your neighbor said, we're in training. You look at somebody and say, we're in training. Amen. So the angels are where? They're at our, at our disposal. They're waiting on us. Hunch your neighbor said, my angels are waiting on me. To give, them to give them an assignment. Come on, say, to give them an assignment. Them an assignment. Amen. Now, the Bible, see, this is why God talks about confidence. A lot of Christian people say, say a lot of things, but they have no confidence in what they're saying. You remember the scripture says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask a little bit of things, 
Oh, I just want to know if y'all knew it. He said, if we ask what? What happens? We know that he hears us. What does that mean? That God has already done it. It's a done deal. Now, the next thing is acting like you know it's done. Because if you don't act like you know it's done, you'd be worrying about it. And worry is of the devil. I said worrying is of the devil. Worry is the opposite of faith. While you're worrying, you're giving the devil ground. When you're in faith, you're giving the angels of God an opportunity. What? An opportunity. Tell you, I know what I'm doing now. I know what I'm doing now. Amen. Now, all, although you may not see angels with your physical eyes, they exist in great multitudes. If you could only see in the realm of the spirit, you see them so I mean, there's so many of them up in here. You really just, whoop! You probably would faint. You probably would faint. They're here. They're here. And not only are they here, but they go with you when you go to your house. Now, you determine who's going to be able to, to, to bless you or curse you because when you talk God talk, the angels start to work. When you talk to devils, talk to devils, angels start to work. You do know he has angels, right? Amen. They're fallen angels. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any way you want to say it, sister, all right. <laughs> so they exist in what? Great multitudes. How'd your neighbor say that's a guarantee? That's a guarantee. They're in here now. Yeah. 